Hello, everyone, and welcome to the very first Gen E 2022 podcast. My name is Salvatore, Salvatore Nigro, and I'm the CEO of JA in Europe, the largest education, entrepreneurship, and employment organization across Europe. We work in over 40 countries. And we have great partners, great technological partners. And our tech partner is Avanad, that uh, is hosting together with us this podcast today. But let me first introduce you the guests that uh, are going to join me for the next 30 minutes. So from Avanad, Fergus Kidd, the senior consultant and emerging technology engineer at Avanad. Hello, Fergus. Hi, great to be here. From the JA Network, Sharon Davis, the CEO of Young Enterprise UK. Hello, Sharon. Hi, everybody. And for the youth we serve, and we served, and we will continue to serve, Divyesh Chudasama, who took part in the company program, the flagship program of JA and Young Enterprise back in 2008. Hello. Hello, hi, great to be here, hi. So we'll talk today about today's technology and the metaverse. Oof, everybody's talking about that, but here I have experts who need to explain it to me like I am a child, really, what is it about the metaverse? So you are the expert uh, today. So let me uh, start with, with you, Fergus a bit of a description of what this metaverse is. So what is the metaverse, its use, and the structure? Tell us a little bit about it. Sure, absolutely. It's a good question, and I think part of it is yet to be defined, right? The, the metaverse at the moment is a bit more of a concept, so it's, its actual direction where we go, like, technology-wise, where we go structure-wise, is, is yet to be defined. Um, I think a really good way to think about it is a 3D virtual space um, that might look like a real physical space that you're you're used to. It might look like a completely different physical space. It might be uh, a little more elements of sort of fantasy outdoors, um, like imaginative spaces where we can come together and collaborate and do things together. So what those things might be um, are kind of yet to be defined. But if you think about the way that we use physical spaces, uh, in all sorts of different and unique ways. It can be the same can be true for the metaverse. In terms of its structure, um, that kind of really boils down to 3D spaces, uh, graphical environments. Interestingly, there are some definitions of the metaverse, which actually, when we think about them, are just about being digital and virtual collaborative spaces. You could argue that something like a Word document becomes a metaverse. So there's kind of some additional information and layers that we have to um, extrapolate uh, to when we start to think about the, the metaverse, thinking about those like highly graphical spaces and um, interactive spaces as well. So these one are the most important traits of the, the metaverse. Those are the component of the modern metaverse. Is it going to change in the future? Is it going to be staying the same? Absolutely. Well, there's, there's, you know, there's a lot of talk and drive around this, this, this topic, especially when we think about modern and emerging technologies. I think there's a huge disconnect between the metaverse today and then the metaverse that we sort of envisage for the future. So the metaverse today is quite standalone experiences in VR, in uh, virtual reality, in extended reality. That we, you know, if you have access to a headset device or even just a, a PC, you can interact with some of these worlds and environments. Whereas actually in the future, we need to start thinking about things like blockchain technologies, um, like NFTs or non-fungible tokens, and, um, and other decentralized technology to really get to where the, our kind of vision of the metaverse is, which is um, more than these kind of standalone and individual experiences, is more about these larger collaborative spaces, which are inclusive, they're not centralized, which means they're not held on one big company's particular systems. Uh, they're not, the whole metaverse isn't on one company's server, for example, it's actually distributed across all of our um, devices and technology, and that makes it more accessible, um, more traceable and more secure as well. 
So we're going to bind two things together, right? The opportunities that we have about technology, about the metaverse, but at the same time, what JA is famous for, right? And young enterprise uh, here in Europe, in UK, um, entrepreneurship. How do you leverage the technology? How do you leverage and envision the future? Now, Sharon, uh, Young Enterprise UK as a significant member of JA in, in Europe and in the world. And in this moment where we are talking, we have 370,000 young people, future entrepreneurs who are competing across over 40 European countries with their mini companies. Have you seen the metaverse already present among the student companies and alumni of Young Enterprise in the UK? Or do you have any example of that? Yeah, yeah, we are definitely, Sal. We're, we're seeing a lot of young people starting to use the metaverse to help solve problems, really, and to respond to new needs. And a lot of those new needs are, are have been compounded by the pandemic. So firstly, you know, we have young people who are using augmented reality, um, basically to, to create like 3D models to basically showcase or bring the customer into their vision for a product. So that's one 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 simple way of, of, of identifying that. A really beautiful example, which I'd love to share with you, is, is where young people are responding to new needs. So um, one of these relates to e-commerce. So e-commerce in relation to clothing. So um, we know that e-commerce relating to clothing's doubled during the pandemic. Um, we had a young enterprise company, startup company, that highlighted the problem of bracketing. So bracketing is where consumers will buy multiple sizes of clothing online with the aim of trying them on when they get them sent home and then returning what they don't want back. Massive problem for retailers. Massive, massive problem for retailers. A, because um, they're costs it's going to cost 60 billion pounds a year for retailers to return some of that but also the sustainability uh, transportation return transportation contributes 15 million metric tons of carbon dioxide into our atmosphere so what the startup company have come up with is an augmented reality uh, app a clothing app that allows the user to try before you buy allowing the consumers to virtually try on the clothes uh, in the metaverse before committing to buying the clothing now that will work from two ends one on a b2b basis so helping the retailers to reduce their number of returns, but also directly to the consumers and helping them to increase their confidence in increasing uh, in their purchasing decisions. How amazing is that? I'm always so amazed about the innovation that our young people bring every, every year. And one of those young people was, well, he's still young which is very <laughs> devious. Uh, I want to go hear from you your entrepreneur's uh, perspective. So tell us a little bit about your business, how it's interacting with the metaverse, and now can today JA students become entrepreneurs in the metaverse? Yeah, sure. So uh, thank you for that. Yeah, so a little bit about my business. So I've, I, I have not just one, I have various different businesses, but there are one in particular um, is within the trading and cryptocurrency sort of um, area. I normally function as a, um, a sole trader, most likely. But in terms of um, at the minute, um, going back to what we were discussing earlier, metaverse is still being defined. And the main way in which I help others sort of, you know, and my business interact with the metaverse is by um, investing in Web 3.0 cryptocurrency coins. So these are on different crypto exchanges. Um, in particular, the the exchange that I use is Gate.io in particular. And there's um, there's another one, I think it's, yes, um, Coinbase.com. So these are the two, these two are crypto exchanges. And I sort of, the way, the sort of role I play is like being a consultant, like an investment consultant. So what I basically do is I help youngsters. And this takes me into uh, the next question on how the current entrepreneurs can actually be, um, uh, what do you call it, entrepreneurs within the, metaverse so there are various opportunities of course so the first one being investment in web3 coins these include ufo um sps um rfox there's various other ones as well um that i've there's loads but decentraland engine and sandbox are three key ones as well sandbox is is an entire well decentraland i think uh, was mentioned earlier um sandbox is another gaming one these an engine these three are mainly gaming based coins 
that um, um, if you invest in now, they're going to have a lot of potential coming up in the future. And they are basically primarily based around the metaverse. So that's one. Um, that's uh, that's one of the things that um, I help with. And secondly, business opportunities. There's many. So the vir- one being gaming, you know, virtual reality, being able to, you know, sort of, th- there's a lot of games that are using the metaverse as a sort of area. I've seen um, one thing as well. Now, film industries are now launching trailers in the metaverse. That's one. NFTs is another one. How youngsters can get involved as entrepreneurs. So non-fungible tokens, where these include art, music, or anything like that. You can create a non-fungible token, essentially. If you want, I can quickly explain what a non-fungible token is. Unless you... Unless, yeah, sure, that's great. Okay, so non-fungible token basically stands for non... Uh, it's a non, non-fungible token equals NFT. So it's a non-interchangeable digital asset, basically that uh, represents a real world object, like art, for example, music, you know, all art, music, um, in-game items and videos, basically in the metaverse, in the digital universe, they can be bought and sold basically online. It's like a digital copy. So if, for example, the Mona Lisa, we have the Mona Lisa, like the real version, like we can create an NFT from a non fungible token and you can essentially just sell it online in the metaverse, like how you do um, in real life. So it's, the 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 opportunities are actually enormous um the other opportunity is business opportunity so meetings with ar so you know how at the minute we're having a video call like this um i think well, let me let it. me first let me first go to ferguson on the, on the nft but yeah I, sure I, Please, I know, yeah. Being, being being an italian here you're mentioning mona lisa i do not know what leonardo would think about it right say it yeah. took me so yeah. long to produce that pieces and yeah, yeah everybody yeah, wants yeah, to take it yeah. in the metaverse want to trade on it really so tell me a little bit more about the nft also from your perspective fergus sure absolutely i'm sure if we if we go back over leonardo's work he probably invented them anyway um, like everything else. Um, so it, it's, you know, um, Divyesh has, has given a really good explanation of um, what NFTs are. And I think there's a couple of kind of key points that I want to hit hit on. And it, it goes back to um, Sharon's point as well around e-commerce. It's, there's a huge trend and a lot of the, the young people joining this call and listening to this will know about things like Fortnite skins and like the way that you appear when playing games. This is going to be really true in the metaverse as well. One, a non-fungible token is able to do to bring to that that element of e-commerce is the um, the ability to kind of claim that this is my this is a single unique um, available asset that I own a single copy of. Because especially when we think in the digital world, when we're thinking about things like three D modeling, three um, D graphics it's actually quite easy to replicate. So, you know, we can photocopy the Mona Lisa and print print her off a hundred thousand times, but there's still only going to be one original copy. It's actually the same with digital uh, goods, with digital, um, with these digital NFTs, is that although the content itself may be very easy to copy, uh, that you actually can claim, you know, ownership of, of, of that singular NFT. So you can make exclusive runs of products. So for example, you could have a trainer that's only available in the metaverse and actually there's only a hundred there's only a hundred nfts for those trainers so they're very exclusive um you can uh have lots of different art videos etc i think another really important topic to to hit on in terms of nfts in the metaverse is actually land itself so when we're thinking about digital spaces and digital worlds um you can actually divide you know everything works the same as it does in in the real world you can divide the amount of land that's available up uh, and you can actually assign the same details that you need to assign to an NFT for a piece of art to a piece of land. So you can actually own a piece of land. You know, um, Devyesh uh, used the example of Decentraland. There's companies that actually own chunks of Decentraland that they've traded tokens for, and then they're building e-commerce experiences on top of those. So uh, again, like it's going to be a really important way to trade all of these different digital assets, keep track of who actually owns them and who actually has a claim to those those virtual spaces. That's so fascinating. It's so fascinating. Obviously, technology is fascinating, but both of you were, were saying we're referring to the gaming industry, right? But playing games in the in the metaverse, there are a lot of things that are uh, the similarities between the two. Um, <clears throat> And I remember now when uh, you are a leader, uh, also playing game in the old good days, uh, you were learning chess, 
right? Because you need to focus on strategy. So how you apply uh, the playing into also the world of business. So here we're talking about technology, definitely. But what are the skills needed to operate a business in the metaverse, Sharon? It's only digital, but also you need digital, social, financial in the metaverse itself. What do you think, Sharon? I think you bring made, I think you bring some great points there Sal I think you do need to have that diversity within your team and the diversity of skills I mean obviously you know um Fergus talks about you know the technical skills that's needed you know we've got um Obviously, there's a couple of things really, really being clear about the problem that you're trying to solve or what the experience is that you're trying to create for your customers. I think that's really, really important. Being comfortable with uncertainty. I mean, Fergus uh, talked about earlier, this is very, very early days for the metaverse. There'll be lots of things that go well and lots of things that you learn, also things that, that, you, that you won't get right. And so it's understanding the important role at failure plays within your whole entrepreneur's journey I think that's really important designing an experience that people want to be part of and creating that footfall and engagement within the business is key it's great if you like it but actually how are you going to get your customers to engage in it and even more importantly going back to your point Sal how do you make that business model sustainable how do you make it so that actually you're getting people to pay for for that experience and I guess the other things to mention to young people who are listening to this is that you need a team that's really diverse it's great if you have one person who is very technically minded, but you need to have marketeers, you need to have those operational guys, you need to have those people who are thinking very much from um, a key messaging perspective. Diverse teams create really diverse audience, and that's what you basically need. You need you need as many people to understand the metaverse as possible to kind of get people excited about it. And Sharon, uh, we're talking about today, uh, but J.A., uh, it's an organization that's 100 years old. Young Enterprise brought JA to Europe. <laughs> so how do you see, you've been the, the first one in bringing those skills into Europe. How do you see that in the future, Young Enterprise programs can evolve somewhat, consider the space taken by the metaverse in our societies, in our economies, your own programs? Well, I, first of all, I think I think the current generation of young people that we have, Gen Z, are extremely alive to the need to solve problems. So what we're seeing a lot of across JA Europe are the companies that are being set up, young enterprise companies, junior achievement companies set up, are often responding to problems. So that's the first thing. And how do you use those new mediums? How do you use the metaverse to help to help to do that? And I feel that the metaverse provides some really great opportunities to do that, to basically increase sustainability, reduce travel, reduce energy needed um, addressing things like loneliness people's feeling of feeling disconnected using the the metaverse as a way of doing that so i think that young enterprise programs will evolve um, to help shape young people's ideas but i think we do need industry and sector partners like avenard who are here today who are willing to help young people to understand what the metaverse offers in terms of those opportunities, help them build the knowledge, help them build the confidence, particularly for those young people who have the greatest barriers to social mobility, who will, for, you know, for lots of reasons, just not have access to the networks that, you know, or, or understanding of what the metaverse can bring. So I think it's literally, and the final thing I would say as well, is really um, bringing young enterprise programs to help young people become discerning users of information. There's lots of this you know uncredible information out there um and it's great that we have diviesh you know on on the on the on the conversation today you know helping shape young people's understanding but there are many sources of information there that is not so factual diviesh uh, she just called you in uh, and uh i want to see you know if i need to invest in new companies <laughs> new business opportunities that exist in the metaverse yeah which are those new business opportunities that you see Great, great. No, it's a fantastic question, actually, that you asked there. Um, so I like I, like we were talking about earlier, Fergus mentioned a few as well. So he mentioned about um, NFTs. I mentioned slightly on gaming as well. And land, land is another very, um, is, a now, is now a very popular growing. So even I, I myself had a look um, as well. It's a very popular growing um, opportunity where you can buy land within within the metaverse, you know, like how we buy land on like in real so there, there's three that we touched on already the other ones that we have um, are marketing in the metaverse so um i've seen a few um i don't know if hollywood but i know about bollywood 
um, a few new movies that have been coming out, they've been releasing their trailers in the metaverse. So instead of doing it on YouTube, you have to go on this link and it's a virtual cinema sort of experience. So marketing in the metaverse is another fantastic opportunity for businesses to market within the metaverse and get traction. The other one is building gadgets. So we spoke about VR and AR, the experience. So companies can build gadgets for the metaverse. You can make money that way. Another one is obviously launching your own cryptocurrency within the metaverse. So create your own cryptocurrency within um, within blockchain. That's another one, of course. And then the last one is the, the most important one, the most fun one is building your own metaverse. So, you know, having a bit of land, having a bit of marketing, having a little house, you know, bringing all these yeah, together. A swimming pool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, why not? Everything. Oh, why not? Yeah. And build your own metaverse, essentially. So there's numerous, of, these are only a few, of course, as uh, Fergus was saying, as time goes, metaverse is still very premature and it's in its early stages, but there are going to be numerous opportunities in, you know, on top of this as well. Yeah. So, and, and, and you know, this is already a revolution. No? And, and yeah. so it was a revolution internet. Now this is another revolution. Yes. Uh, and and uh, Fergus, how do you see internet evolving now? No, because it is a, as significant effect also. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, a really good way to think about the opportunities in the metaverse today is to think about the opportunities at the dawn of the internet. Um, you know, we've talked specifically around oh, some of these skills around the metaverse are around gaming. Well, at the dawn of the internet, uh, you know, people assumed uh, that computer skills wouldn't have like as many kind of uh, diverse applications as they do today whereas you know everybody in the workplace is kind of required to be technically literate on on computers so i think that there will be like things that we simply just don't understand um today around the kind of skills and the, the technology that we're looking at so if we think about the metaverse in that sense there's a there's kind of like a lot of building work still to be done and the web is a huge and fundamental part of that. So Divyesh has already mentioned Web 3.0, or this um, this idea of the next iteration of the web. Uh, the web 3.0 and the metaverse actually kind of go hand in hand for those longer term goals that we're looking at reaching. And that is more around like decentralization. So if you'd like to think about that as giving the power to the user, um, you know, making sure that your own data is secure, making sure that um, the your environments are kind of safe from any external factors. Um, uh, so it, it's going to be a really, uh, uh, I just want to reiterate what Sharon said, like around making sure that you listening to this call have the skills to discern what information in the metaverse and on Web 3.0 is going to become more and more important as the you know control is actually taken away from organizations that we might trust today and more control is given to individual users. So those those two things like with Web 3.0 and the, the metaverse go hand in hand, but are also concentrated around the same technologies. So the same networking technologies, the same security technologies, um, the same implementations of blockchain go really well hand in hand. So actually they can sort of be thought of as two separate ideas and concepts, but based on very similar technologies and very similar skill sets going forward. Well, we have few, uh, very few minutes before we close this podcast, but I'd like to ask you a very final questions. And it's going to be easy because just ask you for one word that for you, it defines really uh, the metaverse or this transformation that we are getting it uh, right now. So what is a word that would define that or a word or, or an, an objective? Uh, let me start we, with you, Fergus. I'd probably go um, really meta, if you like, and uh, say just future. Like I think a, a lot of the future of the way that we operate, a lot of the future skills that we're building towards, uh, a lot of the way that we're going to interact both socially and with businesses and organizations is all really focused around the future and change. Uh, and like the way that we interact with each other is going to change. The way that we interact with our environment has to change. Um, the way that we interact with services and goods is also going to be affected in just the same way as, you know, at the dawn of the internet, nobody would have thought that you'd never be able to phone up anybody at a company anymore. You have to do everything online. Maybe one day we'll get to the point where you can't speak to anybody online even. You have to go into the metaverse. Sharon. 
Um, I would say enterprising, uh, just as, as as Fergus has said that, you know, it is the future. I think it's not just going to be a source for entrepreneurs. I think everyone is going to have to have some kind of enterprising mindset, uh, whether you work for another company or whether you're seeking to work for yourself to understand and apply your skills within the metaverse. DVS, thank you, Shannon. Yeah, so, I mean, it's not one word, but I'll put it together, digital era, basically. What The reason why I said that is we, we, we say we live in the digital era at the minute, but actually the digital era is starting now with the metaverse because we're going to have a completely parallel universe to what we live in where we can do everything we're doing here in the metaverse. So we're now, we're now really moving into the digital era now and it's going to open up numerous opportunities. I'm already planning my next opportunities. Hope you guys are too, so I'm super excited. So thank you so much, Divyesh. And well, I need to first of all go and find this Mona Lisa for the <laughs> next I, mean, I, I want to really see that. Huh? Uh, and I always looking at the future, I want to go back a little bit. And how far we have gone. If I remember my for very first personal PC, it was personal computer was an Olivetti M15, and I spent my day playing frog. And that's a little <laughs> thing, you, you know, you are all familiar. And now what you're talking to me is that I can go and own a Mona Lisa here. Incredible in the metaverse. How far we have gone and what a new digital era, digital universe we are creating in which we will, in a way or another, all operate. But before doing all of that, put in your agenda, 12th to 14th of July, for the Gen E 2022, the European finalist, the largest European event on education, entrepreneurship, and employment. We'll wait all of you there uh, in Tallinn, Estonia, and in the metaverse uh, um, to celebrate the uh, winners, those ideas, those innovation of young people, of those 370,000 uh, young people who have been competing uh, uh, since the last September. We'll do that thanks to our partners and our tech partner, Avanat. So thank you very much. It has been a great pleasure for you. See you in that virtual museum. Ciao.